Does the purity of gold and silver make a difference? Is it better to buy the purest of the pure, three, four, or five, nine silver and gold? Or does it actually not make any difference whatsoever to have a wonderful older 90% gold coin? We're going to talk about that and much more in today's Precious Metal Ramble. Backyard Boy in here and a warm welcome to you all joining me for this week's Precious Metal Ramble where I want to talk about the purity of gold and silver and whether or not it actually makes a difference if you're investing in old school 90% silver coins or even down to the 40 and 50 percenters or whether you're focusing on the purest of the pure, the three four and even five nine gold coins. This one here is a four nine gold coin but the principle still stands is there a difference? Is there a tangible strategy that we can observe and take advantage of perhaps for the better, for going for cheaper perhaps, lower percentage silver and gold, or does that potentially hinder us at the other end when we come to sell it? What about dealers? What about the second hand market? Whole host of different things to think about. And I want to share some of my thoughts, opinions and experiences on this topic here today. Now I'd love to know your thoughts, opinions and experiences as well. It's one of the reasons why I make these style of videos, so please feel free to comment down below in that comment section and we'll have a good fun discussion about it. And if you're enjoying this video, big thumbs up to help the YouTube channel out. So purity is of course a really important factor and I do want to draw a distinct line between gold and silver. So let's get some gold and silver out here on the table uh, up to the camera. So there is most certainly a difference uh, in the sort of value of purities for the different metals. Uh, and gold, as I'm afraid, a lot of you love silver and I love it a lot, but I'm afraid gold just wins this trump card once again as well. Gold is inherently easier and better, and you get better pay rates for it than silver on scrap. And that's part of the question here, because the purity uh, does make a difference. Essentially, if you're having old bits of gold and silver jewellery or cutlery, I presume it wouldn't be gold cutlery, but the principle still stands. If you've got old scrap stuff and it's just it's not even worth selling as a secondhand item, perhaps it's a damaged piece of jewellery or perhaps it's a, a broken, um, I don't know, coin that's just been you know sheared in half or something, uh, it is going to be less valuable, of course, than it's the sum of its whole parts. Gold will always have that inherent gold value noted better than silver, though. But why is that? Why do we value this stuff moreover? I think that's a fairly obvious question. Gold being a lot more valuable uh, in terms of price point really does make that difference. Uh, ultimately, you're getting more value from rescuing a smaller amount of metal. Uh, if you've got a giant vat of uh, old silver jewellery and cutlery that's just, you know, broken and scrapped and it's, you don't know the purities, perhaps all of the bits are just stamped with different purities or foreign hallmarks that are, you know, untestable or untra uncheckable then uh, it's basically just bound for a giant melting pot and you do need to recover quite a lot of silver uh, to actually make something like that worthwhile. Of course with gold it's very much just a small amount makes a huge difference and you can get that added value quite quickly out of it. So gold will always hold king over silver when it comes to uh, scrap prices and you do see that reflected in various different dealers who will basically offer, I've seen as little as 60-70% for scrap silver even though ultimately it's the same kind of process, they're going to just stick it in a big melting furnace and then they're going to make you know, a big ingot out of it, assay it, work out what the silver content is and give you your money. Uh, but that costs a lot of time, energy and effort for smaller amounts of gold. They don't worry about that quite so much. So the first point of call to say there that gold is better than silver is absolutely correct. And ultimately that gold content is the thing that's most valued. And you do see that reflected in various different um, walks of life. You know, jewelers, jewelry shops will always, uh, you know, recover their scraps, they'll recover the dust. Uh, and I've heard stories about um, old jewelry shops that go under a huge renovation and they have the entire, basically, you know, room incinerated, all the curtains, the carpets, the sofas, the chairs, anything and everything is incinerated down and quite a significant amount of gold and silver and platinum can actually be recovered from that process. So I think that's quite fascinating and it really does highlight that gold is better than silver. 
However, there are, of course, then the next step up, which is going to be coins, which are perhaps not scrap. So there are plenty of you know, op opportunities for people to invest in um, silver that is less than 99 pure in the form of old constitutional uh, coinage, uh, for example. And in the United States, that primarily comes in the form of 90% old school coins like these you see here. Uh, of course, there are the 40 percenters as well, and those are absolutely fine if they're like these, which are just basically coin form stuff. Most dealers will take these uh, for a decent price. Uh, whether it will be spot is going to be down to each and every dealer, but from my experiences, you'll find that most dealers will be giving pretty close to spot price for all of these if bought immediately. I mean, maybe some of the older sort of mercury dimes like we see here, you might get a little bit of a higher buy price, but just generic 90% stuff or sterling silver stuff here in the United Kingdom, so 92.5% silver, I think you'll be pretty fine for a quick sale on that uh, sort of dealer side of things. Round spot price, if you're lucky. Uh, it depends on you know the condition of them, I guess, because a lot of the dealers will just look at it and say, well, can I resell that? That's ultimately what their job is. Their job is to take stuff, uh, they buy it off Joe Public, and they sell it on for a profit. That's pretty much what happens. And if they can't, then it goes away to the refiners, and that's where you tend to get the lower prices because it's just not worth their time and energy to take it and refine it. So uh, unless it's in you know significantly large quantities, uh, so from that perspective, uh, you know old school kind of coins like these uh, most certainly are better. Um, I say old school coins like this. I'm holding up a, a modern 99 coin there, but um, you know older older sort of less than pure coins. This one here I think is like 80% proof from from memory, so 80% silver, or it, it might be an 83 percenter. It's a, it's a really weird one. These uh, old 25 peso silvers. Uh, oh no, there you go, seven, uh, 720 silver. Uh, so yes, it, you know, for me, I think these are fine to invest in. And in fact, some of these coins uh, will hold way above the spot price. Uh, you know, you just got to look at things like peace dollars, 90% is here. Uh, you know, you, you'd you be crazy to sell these at spot price to a dealer because uh, not only are they you know, inherently worth more than that just for their own collectability and history. But uh, on the second hand market, these kind of coins really do hold quite a lot more value than the metal that's in them. So from that perspective, you know, if you've got a bunch of old school silver coins, if you buy them in bulk, you can probably pick them up from scrap prices, maybe cheap. But if you take the time and sell them individually, you might be able to get slightly better prices per coin. Now, of course, the problem comes in that you are perhaps trying to sell this little box. In fact, let's get the whole box up. You're trying to sell this box of 90% silvers. So do you go one coin at a time? You know, in this box alone, I don't know, there's probably over 100 or so coins, probably more than that. And, uh, you know, then you're faced with the opportunity here of, uh, well, yeah, you could maximize profit by selling one coin at a time, uh, maybe do some bulk deals and bulk discount stuff, but it's going to be tough. It's going to be difficult. So, you know, selling a whole box of that might be better just to go to a dealer or put in a sort of bulk lot and sold away. So definitely sort of things to think about from that perspective. Now in terms of the finer things in life, let's call it like that, the finer things in life, it sounds so horrible. But ultimately, unfortunately, there is this, you know, thing where three nine, four nine, even five nine gold and silver is much nicer than its uh, lower purity counterparts, unfortunately, and uh, you've only got to just look at some of the modern coins that are being produced around the world in the various mints that are out there uh, to see that there is just some absolutely sublime and stunning work going on. And the amount of level of detail that is achievable in some of these modern issue coins in this high purity is quite staggering. Uh, so from my perspective, I do always think right now that uh, having the higher purity uh, for the attractiveness of it, I do prefer the look of this gold uh, in sort of proof form. But then you do get these kind of older coins like the pesos here, which just, you know, the 90% proof or some 90% purity here is just glorious. It depends on the coin, really it does, and, and it's, you know, age and manufacturing. So there's definitely a, uh, you know, a balance to be struck here. Uh, I prefer I prefer history in my coins. Uh, and to find an old school coin that was made of three nines gold is very difficult for obvious reasons. A lot of the coins that were made not in that purity were done as currency, so it needed to be harder, durable and wearing. Now, of course, we see these higher purity coins. Now, one of the arguments that I've heard a lot of people talk about is that uh, you want to have as pure as possible because when the time comes to sell uh, your silver to all of the uh, photovoltaic 
photovoltaic manufacturing companies for uh, solar panels and the massive explosion that's going to come. You know, we're all hoarding this silver. We've got all of this silver in our stacks. And ultimately, when the price goes to $1,000 an ounce, we're going to sell directly to industry. And they're going to want the purest of the pure so that they can get their jobs done. Um, no, that, that that's a fallacy of uh, an argument because, as I think I've demonstrated earlier in this video, it's very easy, certainly in bulk, to just extract the raw silver out of whatever product it is and they are just going to chuck in. I mean, also the fact that if you've got things like poured silver that's unassayed, unhallmarked, it's going to be very difficult for uh, those people to uh, verify it. And even coins as well. There are so many coins now which are uh, just a little bit uh, less than pure. Perhaps they've been forged or faked. Perhaps they're not quite uh, as good in their manufacturing process. You do hear all of these horror stories about them. And it's just, it's not likely that you're going to get people uh, or businesses that are just going to buy in bulk all of your 999 silver or gold coins, chuck them into their production line. They're going to have to go through verification, assay, and things like that. So that that notion is less than uh, a good one, I think, to think that is going to be the easiest option. Uh, so definitely not worth kind of focusing on if that's your sole gain or you know aim for your um, for your precious metal stacking. Uh, but the purity does make a difference when it comes to uh, you know selling at the other end. So I'll, I'll give one last example, which is my uh, poured silver uh, side of things. So I, of course, pour silver and I get loads of scrap out of it. I mentioned it, in fact, in a video not too long ago. And I sold a bunch of my old scrap to uh, a UK refiner called Baird & Co. And they basically just took all of my dirty old scrap and they uh, basically just um, you know, melted it down, assayed it and refined it. I got 92.5% spot for it. That is pretty much the norm when it comes to um, you know, buying silver or selling your silver as scrap. You just get those prices. So um, there we have the puzzle solved. Multitasking, not as easy as you think. Um, so yeah, you know, it's, it, is, it is interesting to sort of have that uh, avenue to sell scrap silver uh, straight out the bat and get it done. But ultimately, uh, you know, if you want to invest in silver, I think the content of the silver, the purity is roughly irrelevant depending on your exit strategy. And that's the main point I want to finish on here. If you want to make sure that you're making the right decisions for your investments, purity really won't make any difference because if you plan your exit strategies correctly, if you understand the market that you're getting into, if you're understanding that the less than pure silver here has got some difficulties when it comes to the selling, but it has also got some opportunities when it comes to the purchasing because the popularity of this stuff is uh, you know, a factor in it. And there are a lot of people who love this kind of silver and can collect it, can enjoy it, can get lots of different, uh, you know, different pieces from different years, get date runs and all of that. Then it is easy to sell it at the other end. You can get good prices for it at the other end. And ultimately as well, whilst I do not believe at all that we're going to see $100, $1,000 an ounce anytime soon for silver, ultimately, if you're putting this away for 15, 20, 30 years time, it really doesn't matter too much what the pay rate is right now because it's going to be dependent on what's happening down the line. And we just don't know what will happen down the line. So lots of different things to think about. And I hope you guys have got something out of today's ramble. I thank you to you all for watching. And if you have enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button and share this around on your social media. Just as an FYI, if either of these wonderful sets have caught your attention, then they are listed for sale on our website. So go over to backyardbullion.com, links down in the description below, and you can check them out. Uh, if they are sold by the time this video goes live, then uh, please do feel free to get in touch. We're taking orders and commissions. We can make the puzzle board sets and indeed the Giants Causeways uh, to order. So please feel free to get in touch if they are not available by the time you head on over. Otherwise, We'll see you on the next video. A big thank you to you all for watching. And as always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.